Hello everyone. Welcome to Pharmacon Tutorial. Topic for today's session is thyroid hormones, its analog and inhibitors. So let's get started. Here I have briefly included the structure, regulation and physiology of thyroid, the most common abnormalities of thyroid function along with drug therapy to mitigate this disorder which is considered as replacement therapy. So first let us discuss about the synthesis, storage and secretion of thyroid hormones. Thyroid glands secretes three main hormones, thyroxine, triiodothyronine and calcitonin. Of this, T4 and T3 are important for normal growth and development and even for energy metabolism. Calcitonin is involved in control of plasma calcium. So the term thyroid hormone is used to refer to T4 and T3. Follicle or azinus is the functional unit of thyroid. Each follicle consists of a single layer of epithelium cell around a cavity called the follicular lumen which is filled with thick colloid thyroglobin. This thyroglobin is a large glycoprotein each molecule containing 115 tyrosine residues. This follicle and thyroglobulin can be clearly pointed out in the figure. The main steps in the synthesis, storage and secretion of thyroid hormones are iodide trapping, oxidation of iodide and iodination of tyrosine of the thyroglobulin and secretion of thyroid hormone. Iodide trapping is the active transport of iodide ions into follicular cells of thyroid gland by a basement membrane protein called sodium iodide symporter. In the follicular cells, the iodide ion is oxidized to iodine by the peroxidase enzyme. This iodine combines with tyrosine residue of the thyroglobulin molecule to form monoiodothyrosine and diiodothyrosine. Now let's move on to regulation of thyroid function. Thyrotrophin releasing hormone released from the hypothalamus in response to various stimuli releases thyroid stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary. TSH acts on receptor on the membrane of the thyroid follicle cells through a mechanism that involves cyclic AMP and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase. TSH controls following aspects the uptake of iodide by follicle cells by stimulating transcription of the iodide transporter genes, the synthesis and secretion of thyroglobulin, the generation of H2O2 and the iodination of thyrosine, endocytosis, proteolysis of thyroglobulin, secretion of T3 and T4 and blood flow through the glands. Thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the transcription of the genes for the thyroglobulin and the thyroperoxidase as well as iodide transporters. The production of TSH is regulated by a negative feedback effect of thyroid hormone on the anterior pituitary gland, T3 being more active than T4 in this respect. The peptide somatostatin reduces the basal TSH release. Now let's see how plasma iodide concentration influences the thy thyroid function. A reduced iodide Intake with reduced plasma iodide concentration will result in a decrease of hormone production and increase in TSH secretion. An increased plasma iodide has the opposite effect. The size and vascularity of the thyroid are reduced by an increase in plasma iodide. Diet deficient in iodine results in a continuous excessive secretion of TSH and increases vascularity and hypertrophy of the gland, which is called the goiter. This goiter is called also called as dabisher neck. Actions of thyroid hormones. The first and the most important is the effects on growth and development. Thyroid hormones are required for normal growth and development of fetus and infants. The stimulation of specific genes and protein synthesis accounts for developmental effect. Neurotransmitters and biochemical processes of CNS are also affected by thyroid hormones. Secondly, calorigenic effect. Thyroid hormones increases the basal metabolic rate. The heart, skeletal muscle, liver and kidney are markedly stimulated by thyroxine, while brain, spleen and gonads are unaffected. 
cardiovascular effects include increased heart rate, force of contraction and cardiac output. And these effects are due to increased number of myocardial beta adrenergic receptors as well as due to hypersensitivity towards circulating catecholamines. And finally, metabolic effects. Hypercholesterolemia, increased phospholipid and triglycerides in the blood are features of hypothyroidism. While uh, in the hyperthyroidism, raised plasma free fatty acid level are common. The action on carbohydrate metabolism increase intestinal absorption, increase cellular uptake of glucose and its utilization. So let's have a discussion about the mechanism of action of thyroid hormones. Receptors for thyroid hormones are intracellular DNA binding proteins which functions as a transcription factor. Two distinct genes TR alpha and TR beta code for several receptor in isoforms that have distinct functions. T4 may be regarded as pro-hormone because when it enters the cell it is first converted to T3. Thyroid hormone enters cells through membrane transport protein. Once inside the nucleus, hormones bind its receptor and the hormone receptor complex interacts with specific sequences of DNA in the promoter of responsive gene. The effect is to modulate gene expression either by stimulating or inhibiting the transcription of specific gene. Transport and Metabolism of Thyroid Hormones both hormones are transported in blood bound mainly to thyroxine binding globulin. Both are eventually metabolized in the target tissues by deiodination, deamination, decarboxylation and conjugation with glucuronic and sulfuric acid. Liver is a major site of metabolism and the free and the conjugated forms are excreted partly in the bile and partly in the urine. The metabolic clearance of T3 is 20 times faster than that of T4, which is about 6 days. The longer half-life of T4 is a consequence of its strong binding to TBG. Abnormalities in the metabolism of these hormones may occur naturally or be induced by drugs or heavy metals. And this may give rise to a variety of uncommon conditions such as low T3 syndrome. Abnormalities of Thyroid Function Thyroid disorders are among the most common endocrine diseases, particularly prevalent in the middle-aged and elderly. They are accompanied by many extra-thyroidal symptoms, particularly in the heart and skin. One cause of organ dysfunction is the thyroid cancer. This also affects the glandular function including iodide uptake, TSH expression and thyroglobulin synthesis. Many other thyroid disorders have an autoimmune basis. The ultimate reason for this is not clear, although it may be linked to polymorphism in genes. Hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis. In thyrotoxicosis, there is excessive activity of the thyroid hormones, resulting in a high metabolic rate and an increase in the skin temperature and sweating and markedly sensitive to heat. Nervousness, tremor, tachycardia, heart sensitivity and increased appetite associated with loss of weight occur. There are two types of hyperthyroidism in diffuse toxic goiter, toxic nodular goiter. Diffuse toxic goiter includes specific autoimmune disease caused by thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins directed at the TSH receptor and due to active mutation of the TRH receptor. Here the patient with exophthalmic goiter have protrusion of the eyeballs. In the toxic nodular goiter, it is mainly caused by a benign neoplasm or adenoma and may develop in patients with long-standing simple goiter. This condition does not usually have concomitant exophthalmosis. If dietary deficiency of iodine is prolonged, it may lead to rise in plasma TRH and eventually an increase in the size of the gland. This condition is known as simple or non-toxic goiter. Hypothyroidism A decreased activity of the thyroid result in hypothyroidism and in severe cases, myxedema. Disease is immunological and the manifestations include low metabolic rate, slow speech, deep hoarse voice, lethargy, bradycardia, sensitivity to cold and mental impairment. 
patients also develop a characteristic thickening of the skin therapy of thyroid tumors with radio iodine is another cause of hypothyroidism thyroid deficiency during development caused by the congenital absence of incomplete development of the thyroid causes cretinism next we are moving on to the therapy anti thyroid drugs are the drugs used in treatment of hyperthyroidism these drugs control the overproduction of thyroid hormones so let's see the classification the first category of the drugs include goitrogens they are subclassified into thiourea derivatives and ionic inhibitors the second category of drugs include iodide which are hormone release inhibitors example sodium iodide and potassium iodide the third category is the radioactive iodine thyroid tissue destroying agents which includes iodine 131 and iodine 125 finally beta adrenoreceptor blockers propranolol and timolol this figure will give an idea regarding synthesis storage and secretion of thyroid hormones and the drug affecting them now let's discuss about each category of drugs the first one is a thiourea derivatives mechanism of action includes it inhibits the oxidation of iodide to free iodine prevents combination of iodide with tyrosine prevent the coupling reaction in the biosynthesis of tyrosine and inhibits the peripheral conversion of t3 to t4 methyl thiouracil is more toxic compared to metimazole and carbamazole metimazole is less toxic and safe drug to be used in the treatment of thyrotoxicosis next about the ADME they are well absorbed within 20 to 30 minutes after oral administration 40 to 50 percentage bind to plasma protein only a fraction is metabolized in the body the rest is excreted in unchanged form they cross placental barrier and also excreted in milk therapeutic uses include hyperthyroidism in the preparation of patient for thyroid surgery also used in children pregnancy women with a hyperthyroidism leading to graves disease about its adr the associated adr are hypothyroidism goiter skin rashes arthralgia agranulocytosis leukopenia and thrombocytopenia the next category of drug is the ionic inhibitors the mechanism of action of these drugs competitively inhibits the trapping of iodine by the thyroid gland and decreases biosynthesis of thyroid hormone the adr associated are gastric irritation fever skin rashes and agranulocytosis iodide the iodide acts by decreasing the response of thyroid glands to tsh iodide inhibits the release of thyroid hormone and thus it is called the thyroid constipation release of iodine in the circulation is decreased and thus decreases the size of gland leucol solution this leucol solution inhibits the release of thyroid hormones from the thyroid glands the other actions are secretion of thyroid hormones is decreased reduction in basal metabolic rate glands become less vascular and firm the snr cell becomes small in size and colloid content decreases adverse effects include iodism which is characterized by skin rashes increased salivary secretion lacrimination acute hypersensitivity reactions the therapeutic uses include preoperative to control hyperthyroidism in graves disease best control hyperthyroidism with propylurasil then iodine is given for 10 days after surgical operation the chronic adr associated are increased salivation soreness of teeth and gum swelling of eyelids upper respiratory tract infection inflammation of pharynx and larynx the next category is the radio isotopes radio isotopes emits alpha and gamma rays which are having cytotoxic action on the thyroid gland and can be used for thyroid carcinoma these are highly effective in the treatment of hypothyroidism especially in old patients where other hyperthyroidism drugs are contraindicated these are also used to diagnose any thyroid disorders the side effects include high incidence of delay hyperthyroidism 
patients with 30 years chances of cancer and potential damage of offspring.